As clearly seen on this famous landmark of Paris, some days you don't need any fancy monitoring tools to realize how bad air quality is. But beyond the visibility issue, should you be concerned about the potential health impact of breathing in such a poor environment or not? The World Health Organization reported in 2018 that around 8 million people die every year as a result of air pollution exposure. 91% of the world's population lives in places where the air quality exceeds WHO guideline limits, and more than 80% of them lived in developing countries. I guess this figure answers the previous question. Everyone should be concerned about air pollution. Now just think about it. Each day, you eat about 1 kilogram of food, you drink 1.5 liter of water, but you breathe about 10,000 to 20,000 liters of air, which represents roughly 12 to 24 kilograms of air. Because of such a large quantity, breathing even tiny pollutant concentration may affect your health. In addition, while you may choose the quality of your food, by buying organic food, for example, and your water, by drinking crystal clear bottled water, you can hardly decide what air you'll breathe today. As a consequence, you are stuck with whatever air is around you. But don't forget that air pollution is a complex mixture composed of thousands of substances. Although pollutants are at low concentrations, most of the time, they can still cause harmful effects, and everyone is more or less exposed to these compounds. It is also considered an aggravating factor to several diseases such as rhinitis, asthma, or even cancer. Consequently, the health outcomes are multicausal and multipathway, but also unspecific since there is no air pollution disease per se. The list of pathologies more or less linked to air pollution based on new research studies keeps rising, so trying to study and identify air pollution health effects is a great challenge. Nowadays, international, national and regional legislation for air quality standards are largely reinforced all over the world. They tend to promote a cleaner air, to give access to the public to air quality data and to address local pollution issues. But this is not sufficient to take into account or reflect the personal exposure of the population. In addition, these regulations often target only a few pollutants. And several health studies have demonstrated that for many pollutants, there is no concentration level below which exposure is safe. The human health impact due to exposure to atmospheric pollutants can be symbolized by the relationship between exposure assessment and outcome assessment. Emissions of atmospheric pollutants lead to ambient air concentrations that are responsible for human exposure to pollutants. These exposures induce various internal doses of toxicants that may trigger different health effects. These effects can be estimated by both epidemiological and toxicological studies. But what is epidemiology? Epidemiologists look at the frequency and pattern of health events in a specific population called a court. They search for determinants which are the causes of these health outcomes, which may aggravate them, but also other factors that influence the occurrence of diseases and other health-related events. Based on these results, they can establish a risk of disease to plan or evaluate strategies to prevent illness among the specific or general population. Depending on the data and methodology used, epidemiological studies may identify both long- and short-term effects. Long-term effects are triggered and defined by long years of exposure to air pollution. Indeed, diseases may occur many years after the event or be due to chronic exposure. This requires studies in large and statistically significant populations, often observed and studied over years and decades. One of the most frightening results from epidemiological studies is that the number of premature deaths due to air pollution, already extremely high for atmospheric particulate matter, ozone and indoor air pollution, are believed to keep rising in the future. Indeed, by 2050, outdoor air pollution will become the biggest environmental cause of premature death worldwide, overtaking mass killers such as dirty water and malaria. The main reason for this deadly prediction is that air pollution has an effect not only on your lungs, 
but also on your whole body. As you can see on this picture, exposure to air pollution may affect your cardiovascular and respiratory system, impact your reproductive and central nervous system, and may potentially alter your liver, spleen, and blood, depending on the pollutants you are exposed to. Because atmospheric pollution varies greatly depending on where you live, your life expectancy due to air pollution will also be different. For example, by reducing the PM2.5 concentrations to 10 micrograms per cubic meter, which is the air quality guideline of the WHO, you could greatly improve it. In Europe, based on the AFECOM project results performed in 25 European cities, if a WHO guideline was reached, the mean life expectancy gain could be at about 8 months. Thanks to other studies, the increase of the life expectancy was estimated at 7.3 months in the US, while in China, it could go up to 3 to 5 years. But does everyone have a choice of where to live? Not really. So, are you at risk? Well, it will also depend on your direct exposure to bad air quality. This includes your profession or the precise location of your home. Even your daily activities may put you at risk. For example, cooking using open fires and simple stoves burning biomass and coal put around 3 billion people at risk in the world. Practicing intense sport activities during highly polluted episodes may also increase your exposure. In addition, some people are more prone to develop diseases due to air pollution. It will depend on your personal sensitivity. This will be more likely if you have pre-existing health conditions like asthma, cardiovascular diseases or diabetes. But seniors, pregnant women or children are also known to be more sensitive. Another disturbing piece of information is that the health impacts occur at lower air pollution levels than previously thought. And a small increase may significantly harm your health. According to the FAA2 study in Europe, a 10 microgram per cubic meter rise in PM10 may increase to more than 1% the number of asthma cases on the exposed population. But conversely, any decrease in air pollution, thanks to good political, social and individual actions, could also improve your health. So let's say there is hope.